Hello and welcome to another Manga Spotlight. This is the case in which streaming in another world led to the creation of a massive Yandere following. And as I've said before, whenever you see a manga with a really, really long title like this, you can pretty much bet that it's based off of a light novel. And uh, this series would be no different. So yeah, it's uh, based off a light novel by Mion. And for this manga, it's illustrated by Yomain Suku. Hopefully I pronounced those names right. The best way I can describe this series is it is about a guy who decides to start streaming as a hobby. And because of that, he somehow ends up getting a harem filled with a bunch of crazy yandere's. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just read this little premise here. Living in Ataraxia, a world of swords and magic, a reincarnated individual decided to make a living out of streaming. Living in a world where such a thing did not exist, despite the many forms of entertainment, he quickly made a name for himself. This is not the tale of just a streamer, but of a boy who becomes a legend of a haishinsha. I don't know what that last word means. But uh, yeah, basically our main character gets isekai into a fantasy world and starts streaming and develops a following. And in that following, there are a bunch of... Uh, crazy yandere's and they end up becoming psychotically obsessed with them so we have our main character his name is Kanata and Kanata was isekai into a fantasy world how he got isekai it's not really said in the manga maybe it isn't a light novel let's just assume that truck coon got involved but he gets isekai into this world he realizes he has a lot of magical powers because that's how it always is in these kind of stories the uh, main character always gets some kind of cheat skill and for him he just has like very strong magical abilities. Um, and he decides, you know what? I want to stream as a hobby. That was probably something he did in the real world. So now he just wants to continue that here. And in this world, there are no such things as streamers. How exactly he's able to start streaming when streaming has never been done before, I don't know. Maybe he's smart enough to be able to create a website and apps to allow streaming that only he can do. There are electricity in this world. This world is... It's kind of weird. This doesn't really go into explanations. There's electricity. Maybe the electricity is powered by magic. But uh, regardless, it's still a European-style medieval fantasy kind of world. There's sorcery. There's magic. There's swords. There's demons. There's humans. Uh, your cliche isekai kind of settings. You have the humans going against the demons. You have the demon king. You have the hero. You have the priestess. That kind of stuff. So yeah, he's just this regular dude with a lot of magical ability. He's so strong that he's able to go to this uh, royal academy where he's training to just, I guess, improve his magic abilities. But he doesn't really care about any of that stuff. His hobby is streaming. And so he starts this streaming site. He doesn't have a camera or anything. So no one knows what he looks like. All they know is his voice. And he gains a bunch of followers. And a lot of people just ask him um, kind of questions like, Hey, uh, I'm a B-Rank adventurer, and we have this new guy who's just a uh, support, and he's not really B-Rank, um, and I kind of treat him badly, and I, it feels good to me to watch him cry. And then, of course, our hero is like, hey, you shouldn't do that. Like, he's a scout. Scouting magic helps you avoid monsters, and uh, you also save on having to go to the repair shop. Like, don't you know how handy this guy is? He's kind of one of those where he's trying to change people's thoughts on the world going on uh, so for example there's still slavery happening of course there's slavery it's an isekai world right there's always slavery in isekai for the most part and um he's just basically talking about how um how terrible that is like people shouldn't be slaves to others uh there's the um someone asking about the demon king and of course he's like well if i got to meet the demon king i would want to talk to them i would want to hear their side of the story and i would love for them to uh, create a peace treaty with the humans and then we can all just live in peace and we won't have to harm each other and for some reason uh, maybe it's like a cheat skill he has but his charisma is just really high up there whenever he's a streamer like people listen to his words and because of that he ends up developing i guess you could say a harem that's what the series classifies it as though only one of them has actually met him in person but he develops uh some women in powerful roles who uh, become obsessed with him and i mean crazily obsessed like they're constantly donating money to him 
in the hopes that he will fall in love with them and hook up with them. Kind of like in the real world where you have a bunch of, uh, you know, simps throwing money at ethots and stuff like that. <laughs> you have it here, only the roles are reversed. Some of the people in his harem are the priestess or the princess of the human kingdom. The demon king herself. Yeah, the demon king is a female in this, of course. And uh, she becomes uh, obsessed with this guy. And it's basically, he kind of lives these two different lives. He lives the mob life at the Royal Academy. He's not really one of those where he's trying to hide his skills. Like whenever he has to show his magic abilities, he just uses them and his magic abilities are pretty strong. But other than that, he tries to keep to himself. Like he's not trying to aim for the number one spot or anything like that. He's just going through uh, school life, just kind of okay with being a background character, being kind of ignored. And then, of course, there's the other life where he's a streamer and everyone's kind of obsessed with him and his thoughts and uh, opinions on stuff. And eventually it becomes this story of him changing people's... Um, he's changing the world. He's affecting the world through his streaming. But he's affecting the world because he's getting these crazy women to fall in love with him. And just, they just happen to hold power. So, for example, one of them is the princess of the kingdom. And she hears about how he is opposed to slavery. And so she makes it her mission to stop it. She was also like kind of opposed to slavery as well. Like This isn't something that like, oh, because he says slavery is bad, slavery is bad. No, she already kind of had that ideal. But she never thought about actually like fighting for it because she assumed that people wouldn't. Like She would have no uh, backup in that regard. She would have no support. But then once the streamer mentions that, that she's like, you know what? He's right. I, I, I got to try no matter what. So then, you know, she starts trying to stop slavery. Um, the priestess, uh, who is like in charge of the church. Everyone, you know, looks up to her and stuff. She ends up falling in love with this guy. And she actually ends up being the first one to find his identity. Because she, uh, she bumps into him uh, and realizes that he has like this scar on his hand he has a he has a scratch and he's bandaged his hand and they just kind of talk for each other and kind of hit it off not in a romantic sense but in a like oh kindred spirit kind of way and then she goes home because her favorite streamer is about to start streaming and she discovers that he has set up a webcam but the webcam is just aimed at his desk so that like he can like show things without revealing his face and he Starts off by revealing his hands because he just wants to show off that he has a new web camera. And she sees his hand, sees that, you know, the bandage, and she's like, oh my god, the guy I bumped into is Streamer. Uh, in the newer chapter, she's like trying to get close to him and buddy up to him because she knows what his identity is. Um, but she, yeah, she's also trying to like take his opinions and his advice on, on stuff and change the world. Uh, and then you have the Demon King. And the Demon King, um, she came across the uh, the streamer in a kind of funny way. Basically, her uh, demon soldiers win. They like raided some humans and killed them. And um, one of them had this like little, well, it looks like an iPod. And uh, they're like, the humans seem to be obsessed with this guy who, uh, you know, is talking about things. And she's like, oh. Let me listen to it. I want to listen to it so I can understand the humans better, so I know how to beat them more. Like maybe, maybe I can use this to like gather some secrets that they don't want us to know. But as she starts listening to the streamer, she starts thinking, like, "Oh, this guy, like, I can relate to this guy. Like, this guy knows what the hell he's talking about." And then she becomes like obsessed with him, and um, he starts talking about how he wished that the Demon King would, you know, make peace with the humans. And she actually decides to go and make a temporary truce with the humans. Like they'll have a, uh, a non-engagement kind of pact for a short while. So he's changing this world around him through these crazy women who are obsessed with him. And they're, they are obsessed with him. Like every time when we see them, uh, and like it's funny because they act one way in public. Like the Demon King acts like you would think the Demon King would. The priestess acts like this sweet, you know, innocent little nun. The princess acts, you know, dignified and stuff. But then as soon as they're alone in their room listening to the streamer, they become like, <laughs> I don't know. They become um, obsessed. They start like moaning. They, uh, 
they they look like crazy on days, like you know, with the crazy eyes and the the hands on their face, and just like obsessed with this guy. Like I got I gotta find out who he is. I gotta I want to be with him. I want to love him. Like he's mine. No one else can have him. They start fighting amongst each other again, not in person because none of them are really aware of each other. But um, they start trying to like out donate the other, and so our hero starts making a bunch of money off of these girls because they're trying to win his affection through who has the most donations and yeah it's just this kind of funny comedic slice of life story about this guy in this isekai world where he uh unknowingly creates a harem of psychotic yandere's because of his uh streaming hobby and um yeah i i thought i would share it i like it it's it's funny it's interesting uh, it's not, uh, I know like the tag in the beginning said like suggestive, I guess it, it's not like some of the other harem isekais that you can see where it's just like a total power fantasy where like the main character is going around just banging everyone left and right. He's also not like going around and just like killing uh, a dragon in one hit or anything like that. He's only like really shown his magic abilities a couple of times at school, but even then it's just like. Here, I want you to use your magic to hit this target. And then he kind of hits the target. And that's kind of it. Other than that, he tries to become like this background character. Not so much in the sense of like Sid from Eminence and Shadow. Like he doesn't go that far. But he's just like, you know, he, he doesn't really have friends. He just kind of hangs out on his own. He's okay with that. And um, the power fantasy, I guess, just comes from his charisma. From the fact that he's able to gain this following. And um, these crazy women uh just through his streaming so yeah there you go there's the case in which streaming in another world led to the creation of a massive yandere following <laughs> really long title but it pretty much explains exactly what this uh series is which is always the case when it comes to light novels if you're interested i have a link to where you can read it down in the description below like i always do but yeah if you're just down to check out a uh, interesting isekai that does things pretty differently. Uh, this isn't like our hero going on adventures. He's not part of any guild. He's not an adventurer. He's not, you know, he's none of that. He's just a student who decides to stream as a hobby. And it's that streaming that captivates everybody. It's not his, uh, his powers or anything like that. It's just the streaming. And um, if you want to see a harem where everybody in the harem is a yandere, well, here you go. Because so far, every girl that's... Um, starts falling in love with this guy. None of them are sane. Not one. Every single one of them is just crazy out of their mind, obsessed with this guy. So if you've ever wanted to read a harem where every single member is a yandere, here you go. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.